Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're answering your reefing questions. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Deeds. Now if you guys have been paying attention to the channel for a while, in the description of every video is a link to Ask Reef Deeds. That's reefdeeds.com slash ask. So today we're going to answer some of the questions I've gotten over the past few weeks and starting out with Charles. Charles is having a 320 gallon aquarium built and wants to have any recommendations on a fleece filter roller. Um, so personally I went with the Clarity. Um, at first I had a 3000 eventually upgraded to the 5000 and now I'm running the SK5000 on both tanks. I have been very happy with it and this is a great solution. I have seen some very large tanks use dual filter rollers. So it kind of really depends on how much flow is going through your system and kind of what you're planning. But it's definitely one of the top picks on my list. Next up we have Nick. I have an AI Fuge Light and some Shado and Eshop Sump about three inches above the water line asking what percentage I would recommend using for it. Um, given it's so close to the water line, I would probably start a bit lower uh, and probably around 50%. Um, you can always up it from there, but ideally if you can get a little more height out of it, I'd try and get that because you're going to get more spread with more height. But as long as your Chato is completely covered in light, I mean, realistically, you're good. Um, now, being close to the water, you're going to have more par hitting the Chato. So I'd probably start it off about 45-50%, see how your Chato responds. Now, it's going to be a mix of your light intensity, so the higher the percentage, as well as the duration. So if you have it on for, you know, 16 hours at a very high par, that might be too much for your Chato. So you can either reduce that percentages or you could reduce that duration until your Chato gets used to it. Um, so yeah, but personally, I'd probably start at that 45 to 50% mark, run it as is, and see how your shade is doing. If it's a nice dark red color, you can probably up a bit. If it's starting to get a little pale, I'd probably turn down a bit. All right, our next question comes from Richard. Uh, he just picked up a Master Tronic. He wanted to know how many vials it holds. Um, he's calculating all his reagents and adds up to 12, and he wasn't sure if that's enough. That is the perfect amount because it holds exactly 12 vials. Uh, looking in the app, you can kind of see all the different positions for it and yeah so that is perfect now just as a question I get asked all the time um, which test kits you want to use for which parameters so running through the list for DKH so for alkalinity you want to use the Sallyfurt um, for NO2 or NO3 you want to use either Tropic Marin Pro or Fauna Marin Pro and again go with the refill kits because you don't need the whole kit It'll save you some money uh, PO4 uh, Red Sea Pro is the one I go with on that one calcium we use the API test kit because that's the liquid one for magnesium Red Sea Pro. And that's basically gonna cover all of the main parameters that you care about. Uh, cool thing is you can test NO2 or NO3 with those test kits. And again, if you're buying test kits for the Mastertronic, if you have the option, buy the refill, right? Buy the phosphate refill, NO3 refill. Because why spend money on those little color wheels, all those extra vials and syringes that you don't need? You only need the liquid, so save yourself some money. Next question up from a rule wants to know where I bought the frag slash shallow lagoon tank. Um, so I'm not sure if that's the one you're referring to as the more cube kind of one. That one was 36 by 28 by 14, and that was custom made by Concept Aquariums in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Now, if you're talking about my new shallow lagoon kind of frag tank, that was also made by Concept, and it's pretty much similar dimensions. Um, it's 28 front to back, 14 feet, just like the other tank was, except it's about 79 inches long. So basically the same dimensions, but longer. So those are both custom tanks that I had made by Concept Aquariums. Next, we have a question from Josh. Uh, I'd like to find out the best protein skimmer you would buy between Bubble, Bubble Magnus Curve 5 Elite and Reef Octopus Classic. I've honestly not used either of those protein skimmers, so I cannot comment 100%. Um, I do know lots of people have used the Bubble Magnus over the years. I also know lots of people with Reef Octopus that have been happy with them. So honestly, either one's probably gonna do the job for you. Our next question comes from Rich. Hey Devin, I really want to set up and start dosing kelk wash in my reef tank. I've been tuning into your live streams and videos. I still couldn't figure out how to begin dosing kelk. Start by getting the right equipment. What do I need as far as getting started? Really likes the ice cap reactor with the magnetic stir, any other types of pumps. Okay, so with kelk washer, there's two basic methods if you're going to go the reactor route, which is the route I do recommend. So you can either have a magnetic stir like the ice cap, or you can have one with a motor on it like the vast ring both work well um, now it's going to be constantly stirring the kelp with the avast one the ice cap one you'll have on a timer so if you want to do a little bit more of the slurry route which i don't really recommend for new people the ice cap will be a little better for that situation if you want to go a bit the safer tried and true method then the avast one will be safer because you won't get quite the slurry at the top okay now that aside if you want to do kelp 
there's two ways you could do it. Um, the first way, which is fairly common, which I don't really recommend, is running it through your ATO pump. So every time your ATO pump kicks on, it's gonna dose calc through the reactor and boost your pH. Now, the reason I don't like this method is because it's not consistent. If your evaporation changes throughout the year, your calc dose is also changing throughout the year. If you sell a couple frags and take water out of your system, your ATO is gonna kick on and dump a bunch of calc in, which could cause spikes, not the best for coral. So I personally prefer to use a dosing reactor, um, dosing pump. Now for that, I am currently using the Versas, which work very well. I do a continuous dose, just at a very slow drip rate. Now, if I wasn't using a Versa, I'd probably look at the Camor. Um, that would be my next pick. These are the continuous dosing ones, dosing that can run 24 seven. I think these are the perfect ones for this type of scenario. Now, if you have a regular dosing pump, you could do it. You could just maybe dose, you know, 10 mil every 20 minutes or half an hour or hour or whatever your dose is throughout the day. Um, so that's kind of how I would go about it. But personally, I would shoot for a continuous duty pump. But again, you can still make it work by doing a bunch of mini doses with a regular doser. All right, hopefully that helped you, Rick. Now, if you guys have any questions you want me to do these on the air with some of these future videos, head over to reefdues.com slash ask or just check out the link in basically every single video you find posted on YouTube. All right, guys, as always, if you enjoyed, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and I will catch you guys on the next video.